What's going on everyone? Wanna get right into the story we recently posted about. Uh, first and foremost, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, city, state. If you're tuning in from outside the country, let me know what country you are tuning in from. Region, province, continent. Uh, we're gonna get right into it. So posted about a uh, seven-year-old boy, Zamar Jones, Philadelphia, that was shot as a result of gunfire in the street between two parties. Uh, this happened on Saturday uh, the 1st. Mm, you most likely didn't hear about this because it didn't make national news. Um, it's hard to even talk about. It's really hard to even talk about. So uh, if you are from Philadelphia, uh, leave a comment below. Because uh, I feel like the only people that know about this story are people from Philadelphia. And I even talked to some people from Philadelphia and they hadn't even heard about this story. Seven-year-old boy who was uh, on his front porch, front stoop, uh, playing with some toys. Um... Uh, there was a gentleman uh, who was walking down the street and a pickup truck pulled up and uh, shot at that gentleman. Uh, that gentleman subsequently returned fire um, and uh, in the shootout, the seven-year-old boy was uh, struck in the head uh, dead center and uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately died. Seven, seven years old. So I think seven years old would be in like second grade, playing with toys <clears throat> on his uh, front porch. <clears throat> it's hard to it's hard to talk about. But what angered me is that no one's talking about it. Nobody is mentioning it. No celebrities are tweeting about it. No athletes are talking about honoring him at the next game, putting his name on their jersey. Um, no politicians. I haven't heard a word from any politician about this incident. No one's bowing, kneeling, doing anything crazy, wearing any crazy scarfs. Um, why is that? Uh, no gold caskets, nothing, no murals. Uh, we set up, I had our team personally set up a GoFundMe because there wasn't even a GoFundMe. This happened on Saturday. There wasn't even a GoFundMe set up. So I ordered our team to set one up and one is set up now, a GoFundMe. Uh, I'll put the link here for those of you who have, who are blessed enough to have the ability to donate. Great. If you can't donate, if you're not in that situation where you could donate, then that's okay too. Just to send your prayers and uh, send, you know, good energy toward his family and the, all those who are hurting for his loss. I have a hard time understanding and I know people have responded people have said you know um, well this isn't about Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter is about police brutality and injustice and I accept that but Black Lives Matter has gotten a lot of publicity and has had a lot of media airtime as of late so the question is what about the groups that are in place already to help with inner city violence? Young boys, young girls getting murdered in cold blood in the street while playing with toys on their front steps. Where are those groups? Because they exist. It's not like they don't exist and that there's no, you know, BLM version of, you know, supporting inner city violence. 
but why aren't they getting the airtime? Over the last decade, there have been probably thousands of young men and women murdered in cold blood in these cities across across the whole country. So if there is a group that is organized and exists to battle this epidemic, where are they? Why are they not on the news? Why are they not protesting? Why are they not in the streets with signs? Why are they not mad as hell? Where are the people who are angry about this kind of violence? A seven-year-old boy playing with toys in front of his home shot in the head because some gangbanger, thugs, whoever they are. And yeah, I mean, it goes without saying, I don't even need to mention the race of the people involved in the shooting. Everyone watching this knows it was black males involved in this shooting. Everyone knows. Something that no one else is talking about is that it was a white police officer who ran on foot according to accounts. I've had to reach out to a lot of people, but this is what I'm getting. And if someone else can confirm this or deny this, please do. But according to the people I've reached out to, a white police officer is the one who ran on foot scooped up this little boy, ran back to his patrol car, and then apparently had to drive in a little bit of a crazy manner on the sidewalk. Nobody helped him. Apparently one of the vehicles involved in the shootout was abandoned in the road, so the police car couldn't make it down the road. And this police officer did whatever it took driving on the sidewalk, driving around obstacles to get that boy to the emergency room. No one's talking about that either. No one's mentioned that. Why not? We're in this time right now where people are so convicted in their opinions they are so readily ignoring facts they are readily ignoring data they are readily ignoring factual events that are happening because they are just laser focused on one thing and one thing at all. One thing, that's it. We are in a sad state of affairs if that is where we're, we're at. A seven year old boy playing with toys gets murdered by stray gunfire from idiots shooting at each other and no one's talking about it on a national level. Why is that? I have my opinions about why that is. I want to know your opinions. Comment below about why no one's talking about this. My opinion is this kind of violence is common. It's not newsworthy. There's no shock value to it. It's not going to trigger an emotional response. They know this. They know that a story of gang shooting in Philadelphia where a little boy gets struck by a bullet and killed, people are going to see that story and they're just going to glaze over it because it's common. It's not uncommon. It's common. Black on black violence is common. No one even gives it a second look. It's so prevalent that people essentially are ignoring it. 
So when a seven-year-old boy loses his life, it's ignored. And the media doesn't talk about it because the media wants to talk about things that are going to trigger a biological response and get people to watch more media. And sadly, a seven-year-old boy in the hood that gets struck by a stray bullet is not going to get people to watch more media. People would have that on the TV and they could hear that story and they would look over and be like, oh, oh, and that's sad. And they would just like go on cooking dinner. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about it. Nobody in the media is even talking about it. I think it was on the Philadelphia nightly local news and that's it. How is it that people in Philadelphia don't know about this story. How's that possible? Is that where we are as a country? Where little children can get gunned down and no one even wants to even mention it? That's a sad, sad place. We're in a sad place. That's why no one talks about black on black violence. A lot of people are like, oh, black lives matter. What about the black on black violence? Those people aren't wrong. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of black lives are lost, murdered, cold blood in the streets every year in the cities across this country. No one's talking about it and no one wants to talk about it because it's just not newsworthy. It doesn't cause any kind of response. It's sad. Someone said, what's more sad, that it's not even newsworthy or that black people don't even care about it? You can't name me a city in this country today where white people are murdering each other at the rate that black people are murdering each other. Name me one city that has white on white violence to the level of Chicago. You can't. Name me one city that has white on white violence, murder, to the level of Detroit, Baltimore. You can't. You just can't. Because it doesn't exist. No group of people are killing each other, their own, at the rate that people of color are doing it in these cities. And no one is batting an eye. No one's saying a word. And if you bring it up, you're called a deflector because you're supposed to focus on the nine people who have been killed by police. You're not supposed to focus on the 900. You're supposed to focus on the nine. And don't you dare Start talking about that 900. Keep focused on the nine. And if you start talking about the 900 or the 1,000 or the 2,000, you're a racist. You're a deflector. Can't say it. Don't talk about Don't talk about black on black violence. When you're talking about Black Lives Matter, don't talk about black on black violence. You will be crucified. It's sad. That's where we're at. So I have the GoFundMe for this young boy's family. And we want to take care of them. And we've seen the other people who were in the news that they got the royal treatment. This young boy has gotten no treatment, no attention. So I would like to do something for him and his family. Whatever it could be. Something. Something. For a little boy murdered by the negligence and the reckless behavior of his own people in his own neighborhood.
I'm going to have the team loop in the video of this shooting. We're going to put it on, on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to loop that video in right now. So you can watch how it happened. It's a disturbing video. But it's something we all need to see. This is what's happening every day. Every day. Now, police officers, they're not perfect. They're not robots. Police officers are not perfect. They will make mistakes. Mark my word, I did the job for nearly 15 years. We are not robots. So at some point, again, as long as humans are involved in policing, a police officer is going to do the wrong thing. And it may result in the loss of a black life. It's going to happen. To say it's never going to happen again is just stupidity. It will happen again. And whether it's negligent or intentional, accidental, it will happen. It may not happen for another six months. It may not happen for another year. But when it happens again, once again, we will not think about or talk about any of these young kids getting gunned down in their own neighborhoods playing with toys. We will only focus on that one once again. And the hundreds and the thousands that have gone before them, taken from their mothers, their fathers, their grandmothers, their names will never be spoken. No politician looking for votes will ever utter their name, will never kneel in Washington, D.C. in honor of their name. Nope, you won't see it. You'll only see that happen again when a police officer, an imperfect human being, screws up again. That's when you'll hear the celebrities like LeBron James. That's when you'll see the politicians. That's when you'll see the tweets. Until then, you won't see anything. You won't hear anything. Believe me, you won't hear a word. Just think about that. Think about what you're watching. Think about what you're supporting. Think about who you are listening to. And think about what their intentions are. What is their agenda? I don't care if you have white skin. I don't care if you have black skin. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what gender you are. Or I don't care what gender you choose to be identified as. This is something that should be troubling to every person in this country. Babies are getting gunned down in our streets in America. We're not in we're not in Baghdad. We're in America. Children are getting gunned down. And they're being ignored. And everyone can post a hashtag. Everyone can post a black square. Everyone can do all that garbage. But if you ignore the hundreds and the thousands and you only pop your head back up and post when some cop somewhere screws up once a year or twice a year, then ask yourself, do you really care about the bigger issue? 
Or are you just going with the trend? Making that post, hitting that hashtag, so all your followers can say, oh, look, she cares. She's not racist. She cares. That'll make you feel good. Yeah? Make you feel better about yourself? Just think about that. I'd like to get this GoFundMe for Zamar Jones to meet its goal. And I'd like to personally meet with his family. And I hope that it offers a small bit of comfort because no parent should ever bury their child. I'll leave it at this. And it's in the post. Zamar and his classmates had an opportunity to let everyone know what they wanted to be when they got older, when they grew up. And little Zamar on his sign said, I want to be a police officer. I think Zamar would have been proud of the police officer that ran on foot to try to save his life when nobody else in the neighborhood even moved a finger. Nobody helped that police officer. A seven-year-old boy playing with toys in front of his house was shot in the head right here and no one jumped into action a lone police officer ran on foot to scoop that little boy up ran back to his car and got that boy to the hospital so my prayers go out to that police officer Zamar was the one in the neighborhood that was always helping people out I talked to quite a few people. He was always one walking to the store for people, getting stuff for people, trying to help everyone. So it's no wonder he wanted to be a police officer. He would have made a difference. He had that helping nature in him already, even at age seven. He would have made a difference. His life mattered, and he would have surely positively affected the lives of even more people than the ones he already affected even beyond his neighborhood so to his family you have my condolences from everyone here at the 221B family and just know that we're going to do everything we can to bring you a little bit of solace and I hope everyone watching this takes a second to realize what is really going on in this country. And what people want you to hear and what people don't want you to hear. Imagine burying your child at age seven with a bullet hole in their head. Think about it.